Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. In today's Q&A video, we're going to be talking all about shoelaces. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Wellington shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. And remember, if you have any comments or questions while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video or are interested in any of the products we discussed, please visit our website, hangerproject.com, where we've curated the finest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other products for the well-dressed. Our first question today is from Nothing Master on our how to tie dress shoes using the Berluti knot video. And it reads, knot theory is the study of mathematical knots. Believe it or not, in its inception, it was inspired by knots that appear in shoelaces and ropes, but the mathematical knots differ from the shoelace ones and that the ends are joined together, for example, in a ring. Talk about never having to worry about them becoming undone. So Nothing Master, a great comment. Thank you for leaving that uh, on our video. And it's really interesting to just think of the historical significance of shoelaces and just ropes in general. I'm, I'm an avid sailor, I love sailing. And anyone that's spent any time sailing knows that one of the first things that you learn when you learn to sail is how to tie proper knots. They're so important just in terms of safety and convenience. And really shoelaces uh, and shoes have been around for a long time. And it's no surprise to me that volumes of books have been written on shoelaces and how to tie them properly. Here at Kirby Allison, of course, we take tying shoelaces very seriously, and that's why we've got two videos dedicated to the subject. One is our video on the Berluti knot, which I show here. Uh, it was shown to me by uh, a friend of mine who's a dear close friend of Olga Berluti. Uh, she taught uh, his father how to tie his shoes using the Berluti knot, and he taught his son, my friend, how to tie his shoes using the Berluti knot. And it's an absolutely incredible and beautiful double knot. Not only does it lie flat, but it causes the laces ends to really uh, kind of curve down the shoe. And as you can see, it just really controls the shoelace more than your average shoelace knot. And the most important thing is that it's a double knot, so you never have to worry about your shoelaces becoming untied. But we don't stop there. We also have the Parisian knot video, which goes into another method to tie your shoes uh, that is a, a little bit faster to tie and a little less clumsy than the Berluti knot uh, and still achieves that same double knot effect. So you don't have to worry about your shoes coming untied at the end of the day. If you're anything like me, you were never taught how to tie your shoes uh, any other way than the way your parents taught you how to do it as a child. So until I learned the Parisian knot and the Berluti knot, I went through life tying my shoes the same way that I was taught as a child and constantly having to retie my shoes throughout the day. And I promise you that with the Berluti knot and the Parisian knot, that is no longer the case. And actually, our Berluti knot video is our most popular video on the entire channel with over 650,000 views. So if you haven't watched that video and you're watching this one today, promise me that the next video you watch is how to tie the Berluti knot. Our second question today is from Dylan, and it reads, another great video, Kirby. Uh, I've gotten more friends interested in dressing well because of your videos. Quick question, what is the difference between your Wellington and Sovereign grade shoelaces? Uh, Dylan, a great question. Thank you for your comment, and more importantly than that, thank you for recommending our videos to your friends. Here at Kirby Allison, we are passionate about helping the well-dressed learn about traditional craftsmanship and quality uh, and helping them learn how to take care of quality because it's our belief that if you know how to take care of quality items, then you can afford to invest in quality. And so that's the whole entire thesis of this channel. So thank you for helping spread that message. So Sovereign Grade represents our highest quality standard here at Kirby Allison's Hangar Project. So the idea was that as we traveled the world and we had the opportunity to meet all these incredible artisans, you know, we inevitably found that in the back room or the longer you got to know them, they'd always reveal something else about how they did something. You know, maybe it's not available to everyone, but at a much higher quality level or standard than what is uh, commonly available. And so the idea between, uh, behind Sovereign Grade is that when we you know, met these, uh, these artisans and developed the relationships, that we would have them do very special items just for us under the Sovereign Grade name to the absolute highest quality standard. And the idea is all the quality that matters and none of it that doesn't. So you'll find that with our Sovereign Grain brand, that it really represents the substance of what quality is uh, with none of the bells and whistles that unnecessarily drive the price through the roof. 
So you're not gonna find anything that has you know, frivolous, uh, delicate details that are expensive to make. Instead, you're gonna find items with substance and with quality and integrity that are made by some of Europe's best heritage manufacturers uh, to the absolute highest quality standards just for us. And the whole point is that the items will last a lifetime. Now the Wellington brand is our brand of our shoe care accessories. As you guys know, uh, I've been shining shoes for uh, years and I'm passionate about uh, shoe care and shining shoes. So Wellington were those items that just didn't exist but I really wanted to have to use for myself. So that's really kind of where the Wellington idea came from. And so you know, you'll find uh, on hangerproject.com that we have a wide, uh, a very large collection of Wellington shoe shine brushes you know, made exclusively for, uh, for us. I spent, uh, you know, two years finding a manufacturer uh, and really building out what is a very large, cohesive and coherent collection of some of the best shoe shine brushes in the world. And they're not ridiculously expensive. They're really reasonable in price, especially whenever you consider how well they're made, exactly to my personal specifications. And the same is true for our shoelaces. Our new Wellington shoelaces, you know, really came out of a frustration of mine of just how impossible it was to find the same quality shoelaces that I was receiving on my bespoke shoes. And so I worked with my friends in the bespoke shoemaking industry to find out exactly who they used to make their laces and how they had their laces made. And that is really how the idea uh, for our Wellington shoelaces was born. Now it started out as sovereign grade, but as kind of the concept of Wellington has further developed, we're now making all of our shoelaces under the Wellington brand. And I can say unequivocally that these are the exact same quality of shoelaces that you would get on a bespoke pair of shoes. And we have the widest, largest collection of luxury dress shoe laces available anywhere in the world, not just in styles, but in lengths uh, and colors also. And so one of the things that many people don't understand about dress shoe laces is that it's often one of the simplest way to improve the look of a pair of shoes. I mean, of course, uh, other than polishing them. But you'll see even a nicely polished pair of Allen Edmonds, that can look great. But if you have the cheap factory laces that come on those shoes, for some reason, just the finesse is still lost. And so with our Wellington shoelaces, we have them all made for us exclusively in Northampton, you know, by the preeminent supplier of dress shoe laces to the Northampton shoe trade and bespoke makers. And they are the absolute highest quality, 100% uh, cotton, really finely woven, very strong, uh, beautifully waxed, uh, and uh, great shoelaces. So I love shoelaces. It's been kind of a personal pet project of mine to really uh, ensure, if not guarantee, that we have the largest collection of luxury dress shoe laces available anywhere in the world. And if you haven't checked out our Wellington shoelaces, I encourage you to do it. You know, make sure you uh, make comments or ask questions on our YouTube channel because everyone that's selected uh, for these Q&A videos is gonna receive a free pair uh, of our Wellington shoelaces. Our third question today is from Joyce Ireland. It is on our uh, how to tie dress shoes, the Parisian knot method. And it reads, Kirby, I love your videos and your awesome production values, not to mention your fabulous products. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, I've been tying the Parisian knot for years. It is great for round shoelaces. The extra twist around the first loop adds just the right amount of friction to keep the knot secure. I've taught the Parisian to several people, usually when I've found them retying their shoes in the middle of the day. There is one potential drawback to this knot and it becomes apparent when untying. If a loose end accidentally threads through a loop, then tugging that loose end will result in a tangle that has to be carefully unpicked. It's a small price to pay for the all day security and can be avoided by a little care when untying your shoes at the end of the day. So Joyce, uh, thank you for your comment. Uh, you know, I'm just constantly blown away by the number of people that once they discover the Parisian knot method or the Berluti knot, just how it totally transforms uh, you know, their perspective on tying their shoes. And one of my favorite things to do is to really go through the comments underneath each of those videos and just read the random comments from people that say, I don't know why I'm watching this video at 2 a.m. in the morning, but it's totally changed my life. Uh, you know, something so insignificant as tying your shoes every day, I mean, we do it every day, some people more than once a day and never think about it, can be done thoughtfully much better in a way that really makes a difference uh, in one's life, uh, at least not having to retie their shoelaces. Now you point out a great point, and that is because it is a double knot, if you're not careful to untie it, you can easily tangle it, which uh, does result in a little bit of tedious work to untie or unpick that knot. So if you're really careful by pulling both of the loose ends equally, 
It perfectly unties and you don't have to worry about any untangling. Now, of course, uh, I've had many of my shoelaces tangled at the end of the day whenever I'm in a rush untying them, uh, but it's always because I was uh, quick to just pull one end or really wasn't paying attention to do it uh, evenly. So uh, with both the Parisian knot and the Berluti knot, as long as you're uncareful to pull each end equally and at the same time, you'll find that your shoelaces, uh, even your double knot, Berluti and Parisian knot laces, uh, untie easily without ever tangling. Our fourth question today is from a Bok Talk and it reads, nothing to do with Berluti, but speaking of shoelaces, I'm deeply puzzled as to why branded sports shoelaces seem to be at least double the length required. What do they think we are supposed to do with all the excess lace still remaining after we've tied a cumbersome triple knot? This, I really want to know. So, great question. Uh, that is absolutely a pet peeve of mine. But to be completely honest, that's not a problem exclusive just to sports shoe laces. Uh, you'll even find that with many dress shoe laces, sometimes they're delivered with uh, shoe laces that are too long or even more annoyingly too short because it makes it almost impossible to tie. And so that's why with our collection of Wellington shoelaces, we have five different lengths. Because depending on how many eyelets you have, and even the size of your shoe, you're gonna need different uh, length of shoelaces. So we have 60 centimeter shoelaces for two and three eyelet shoes. We have 75 and 80 CM shoelaces for five and six eyelet shoes, and depending on how large the shoe is. So even if you have five eyelets, but wear a size 12 shoe, you're probably gonna to wanna to go with one of our 80 CM laces. Whereas if you have five eyelets and wear a size nine or nine and a half, you're probably gonna to wanna to go with our 75 CM laces. And we even have 120 centimeter laces for boots that are long enough to go up all the additional eyelets and the hooks. So if you're unsure of what length of dress shoe laces uh, that you need, we have a guide on all of our shoelace buying pages, uh, but you can also buy a 75 and 80 centimeter length, or you can measure your current shoe laces uh, just to see which is the proper length for you. Or you can call or email our talented customer service staff. I'm not able to answer all of our customer service phone calls or emails, but everyone that does has been exclusively trained by me. Uh, they're always consulting with me throughout the day and the week so that we're answering your questions and concerns as accurately accurately and as timely as possible. Our last question today uh, is from uh, quite a while ago. It's from uh, Daniel J over a year ago on our how to lace dress shoes, which uh, brings up a great point. We also have several great videos of how to properly lace dress shoes, which again, uh, we have our own way of lacing dress shoes that we think is better, it is better. Um, and so check out that video. But uh, Jan Daniel J, I just wanna give a little bit of a shout out to Daniel uh, because his question reads, uh, wax laces are horrible in cold weather. And uh, he says that in summer I used waxed, but in winter I used unwaxed cotton laces or similar. I've noticed that waxed laces tend to snap off when it starts to freeze. So uh, clearly this is not a problem that we experience here in Texas. So there was a great question from Daniel and he actually brought up a, a very interesting point. And that is uh, indeed, if you live somewhere in Scandinavia or someplace in Canada where you, know, you really deal with very cold winters, the waxes on a wax cotton lace can freeze and cause the lace to snap. So uh, because of that reason, an unwaxed cotton lace is actually exceptional for the winter time. Now, if you're also a person that has a problem with your uh, shoelaces coming undone, maybe you're not someone that's using our Berluti or Parisian uh, tying methods, uh, the additional friction of an unwaxed cotton lace uh, also helps further secure the knot. Now that said, uh, one of the other things that I find very interesting about unwaxed cotton shoelaces is that for some reason, uh, and of course this is probably just due to tradition, that John Lobb St. James, you know, the uh, traditional John Lobb, not John Lobb Paris, but John Lobb St. James, the bespoke shoemaker, exclusively uses unwaxed cotton dress shoelaces on all of their bespoke shoes. So John Lobb St. James exclusively uses unwaxed round uh, cotton dress shoelaces on all of their bespoke shoes. And uh, that's just another reason why here at Kirby Allison Hanger Project, uh, we insist on carrying, you know, a four or five links of the unwaxed round cotton dress shoe laces. Because again, we want to bring to you that bespoke quality shoelace. Maybe you're someone that prefers the softer look of an unwaxed cotton dress shoe lace. Well, we have that here at Kirby Allison Hanger Project. And John Lobb really does have a point. An unwaxed cotton dress shoe lace 
uh, really does have a softer, uh, slightly more casual look to it than a, uh, a higher gloss a wax cotton shoelace that is inevitably tighter uh, because that wax kind of helps hold it together and prevent any fuzzing uh, and also shinier. So it's just one more way that you can change the look of a pair of dress shoes uh, just by changing the dress shoe laces alone. And you don't have to be obnoxious and put red shoelaces in a black pair of shoes, you know, to change the look of the shoe. It can be just something as subtle as using, you know, our narrow flat waxed uh, a cotton dress shoe lace or uh, switching it up to waxed round uh, or even doing an unwaxed round uh, cotton dress shoe lace. So it doesn't have to be colors. Uh, it certainly can be much more subtle and much more elegant just by some of these small, really subtle differences that are available in dress shoe laces. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content helps us make better videos for you in the future. Or you might be someone that just enjoys being the first person to comment on one of our videos, Diego Delgado. <laughs> no, Diego, we really do enjoy that from you, so uh, keep that coming. Uh, I really do read all those comments and questions personally uh, and do enjoy getting back to as many of them as I possibly can. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Thanks for joining me.